Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle products that are friendly to your skin. So if that's your thing, please do consider hitting subscribe anytime during this video. So today I'm talking about second chance skincare. These are products that did not give me the ooh la la sensation when I first tried them out. They either got a bad review from me or an eh review. And so today I have three products, one from Vichy, Rovectin, and one from Element that I want to revisit, tell you about what I thought about them on first try and what I think about them on the second chance. Let's jump right into it, give the video a big thumbs up and let's go. First up is the Vichy Mineral 89 Booster. So what did I think about it when I first tried it back in the summer? Nah, kind of boring. That's kind of how I felt about it. I was like, this is not really all that impressive. Now, this is an incredibly popular, I would even say iconic product when it comes to French pharmacy brands. This has been around for a really long time. It's kind of like just in our consciousness, whether we have tried it or not. I mean, I have even tried K-Beauty knockoff products of this. They look exactly the same. Now, there really are two sort of star ingredients. And one is, as you can see, sodium hyaluronic or hyaluronic acid. This being marketed as a hyaluronic acid booster, especially when I first tried this, as excited as I was because it is so popular, popular, I was just like, uh, okay, like ingredient wise, like they're not reinventing the wheel here at all. However, there is another ingredient here that I think gets underplayed a little bit more in North America, but you're going to see it promoted a lot more in France and in Europe, and that is mineral water. This has 89% of mineral water, and that's what you see right at the top of the ingredients. It just doesn't stand out because it's just listed as plain water. Now, mineral water has all these wonderful components, all these minerals and vitamins for your skin that help to promote a healthy skin microbiome, to promote healthy, strong skin. Skin. And um, it does seem a little bit like woo woo, like fancy mineral infused water for your skin. But let me tell you, as somebody who's been using fancy mineral infused water for their skin for many, many months now, I can attest to the fact that it actually does seem to help. It really does help. I have sensitive skin. I um, sometimes get eczema flare ups. Like my skin really appreciates having a healthy microbiome and a strong moisture barrier. And this is just one way to approach that with mineral water. I've been adding it into my routine where my skin really does need a little extra hydration. It's uh, winter time. I need any little extra TLC that I can get, right? So I've been using this right after toner before serum and like I think this is making a difference in my skin <laughs> it is a very very subtle difference but now that I kind of know what mineral water can do for my skin because I have been using the La Roche Posay thermal water spray um, through most of my skincare routines for the last couple of months and that's what I'd say about that product too. It's extra. It's not a huge, like big difference, but I've noticed a difference and it's worth continuing to use. That's kind of how I feel, feel about this. And I'm really feeling like the word booster is so appropriate because this just kind of boosts my overall routine. It just makes my skin feel strong and healthy. You know, it has really helped to cut down on inflammation and redness. This is not the star of my anti-irritation, anti-inflammation uh, routine, not by any means, but I can tell that this is helping. I can tell that this is boosting the effects. My skin does seem to respond well to French pharmacy products with, you know, mineral water in it. And now that I kind of can recognize that, now that I have a baseline for that, I can tell that this product is, is, is making a difference in my routine. It's nice product. I understand it now. I understand it a lot better. I'm enjoying it um, a lot more. And so yeah, my opinion has changed on this just a little bit. Next up, let's talk about Rovectin Anti-Irritant Barrier Repair Ultra Cream. So this is like a very exciting looking product. Like this is like a Kelly centric product. This is something you know I would get excited about. It's a barrier focused moisturizer. And I will say like call back to many, not many years ago, call back to like 
like 2018, 2019, um, I was using the Rovectin Barrier Repair Face and Body Cream. And that was actually when my I was struggling with my, my moisture barrier and I really enjoyed that product. It actually helped my skin quite a bit. Um, so I have very fond memories of like barrier repair creams and Rovectin. So when I first saw this, I was very intrigued. When I first tried this, I was like, okay. Um, and my initial opinion of this, which I haven't had the opportunity to share fully with you um, just yet, when I first tried this out, um, I actually thought that it was starting to congest my skin. I started to get quite a bit of clogged pores after like day three of using this as my main moisturizer. And I was like, uh-uh, it's got to go. So this actually is somewhat similar to the face and body barrier repair cream from um, Rovectin. They share some of the same uh, key ingredients, including shea butter, niacinamide, ceramide, and fatty acids. But the textures here are very, very different, where the face and body cream is a bit more um, buttery and thick and creamy. This is uh, different. This is a little bit more of a texture that I would classify as ointment like. Um, it looks um, like a lighter cream, but as you spread this onto your skin, it will kind of spread out into kind of a lighter layer that has a nourishment. You can feel the oils in here. There's um, avocado oil in here. There's a couple other ones I can't remember right now, but I'm going to put the ingredient card on the screen right now. You can feel those oils as you're um, working that into your skin. There's a richness um, to this. And as it absorbs into your skin, even though it like looked and felt light at first, as it absorbs in, it starts to feel very protective, very occlusive on your skin. So this was actually helping keep my skin um, hydrated. The occlusivity was helping um, to fight dehydration, which was great. But then I started to see all this congestion popping up on my skin and my skin was getting really, really bumpy. And I was like, you know what? This is probably a little bit too occlusive for my skin. And so I stopped using it and my skin did clear up. And so I was like, was it the cream? <laughs> We are so quick to jump to conclusions about uh, new products clogging our skin, right? Um, I do play around with lots of new skincare. I will admit that for sure. And so I keep my mind open to the fact that it could have been anything. It could have just been that my skin was going through that awkward time as it was adjusting to colder temperatures and the clogged pores were inevitable. It could have been I was putting on too much uh, face oil you know, before this product, because I was getting really generous with my layers because it was just so dry and irritated. I was like, maybe I put on too much oil, you know, um, maybe it was the wrong combination of products. So there's always so many factors that go into why our skin does what it does. It's not just necessarily about one product. And so that's really the spirit of this video is like giving things a second chance if you're feeling brave enough, right? Which like I said, fair game, let's go. Um, so I wanted to let my skin kind of like calm down, <laughs> clear up. Um, and then I, I added this back into my skincare routine to give it a second chance. Now that I've been using it for about two weeks, I have noticed my skin is not congested. <laughs> so I don't think it was this cream. It may have been this cream plus the other products that I was using with it. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but it wasn't just this cream alone. However, I will say this cream, it really comes down again to the texture for me. And I feel like this just isn't quite 100% right for me. This is at the same time too much and not enough for my skin. It's, it's very confusing. Even for me, it's kind of confusing to explain this um, for me. I prefer more medium weight types of moisturizers um, like CeraVe Moisturizing Cream or Iliun Ado Ceramide Concentrate Cream, the two that I talk about the most that have really nice medium weight um, textures, but a little bit more of a traditional moisturizer cream type of texture. The Rovectin uh, Repair Face and Body Cream that I mentioned before, it's a little bit heavier, it's a little richer, but it's got like that, that, that weight to it. It's got a little bit more oomph to it and my skin just seems to appreciate that a lot more than these thinner textures even when they're occlusive even when they have like a, a oil richness to it I don't generally enjoy 
I think it's just what my skin appreciates, right? It doesn't really appreciate the thinner types of textures. So just right there, it's just not as joyful to use, but I will say that I think it is a little bit on the thinner side for what my skin needs at this moment. And I said, it's not quite enough, right? But at the same time, it's too much for my skin. It's a little too occlusive. I don't really appreciate that in moisturizers. That's what makes my skin feel a little sealed off, makes it feel a little suffocated, like you can't quite breathe. This is so odd because it's not a really heavy cream, but it's got such an occlusive property to it that my skin, even though it's dehydrated and it benefits from occlusivity, I still need something that feels like my skin can breathe. Your skin doesn't have lungs, I know, but it's just the sensation of, of something not like, like just suffocating and sealing off your skin. And this has a little bit of that feeling. Like it's just a little bit too occlusive for me, just a little bit too much. So bottom line here, it's not right for me. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just not, it's just not what my skin appreciates. And being in touch with what your skin appreciates is a really important part of the skincare journey, is it not? So I just don't really appreciate that. That's my opinion. But I do think this is a nice cream. Like I think this is a nice cream. And if you're somebody who likes occlusivity, you need to lock it down, but maybe you don't like heavy layers. This is a rather unique cream because it hits both of those things. You don't, you don't find that that often. It's got a great ingredients list. It's very protective. It's very gentle. It's very soothing. It's just not right for me. This isn't a, I love this for you type of product. I don't love this for me, but I love this for you. I have a, a good opinion of this. Next up, let's talk about Element Advanced Calming Solution. Now, I actually talked about this in a video that I called skincare I wanted to love, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> and this was in that video because this is something I wanted to love. And um, really my opinion about this product back then was like, eh, it really did not meet my expectations at all all. So what is this? This is kind of marketed as a toner and or serum. So it's kind of like a two in one type of product that has about 60% of centella in it plus some polysaccharides. It's really focused on calming, soothing, irritated skin, hydrating it, focused on skin health. And at the time, this brand had just kind of been unveiled, um, the Element brand, and there was a lot of hype around the brand itself. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the aesthetics of this brand really drew me in and the philosophy of the brand really drew me in. You know, they really do focus on focusing just on the ingredients that are proven to work for your skin in uncomplicated formulas without any necessary frills, with no fragrances and all of that. That drew me in. I was like, just stick to what, what, what works, keeping it minimal, keeping it sensitive skin friendly. That definitely drew me in. But I mean, it's gorgeous. It's this heavy green bottle. The label has kind of a vintagey vibe to it that spoke to my soul. You know, I can't deny it. Like this packaging and this marketing really hooked me. Um, I don't talk a lot about packaging on my channel because I have sensitive skin. So the packaging for sensitive skin friendly products usually is not beautiful or intriguing. It's usually just white, right? Or blue. Um, so when I do come across a product that like has gorgeous kind of like vibes, it pulls me in. So the reason why I was like, eh, about this is I really expected this to be deeply, deeply soothing. Like that type of bam, immediate irritation relief type of product. And it's not. It wasn't when I tried it. And I remember trying it when my skin was feeling a little bit irritated and it just didn't give me that sensation that I was really craving with something that had a high amount of centella in it. Um, so it was kind of disappointing on that on that end. As far as hydration goes, it's it's got good hydration. I have very dehydrated skin. I say this all the time, but it's important to remember, my bar for hydration is very high. I need something that really deeply quenches my skin and really gets to the source of my dehydration. This just feels nicely hydrating, it feels refreshing on the skin, but it doesn't really get in there, you know what I mean? So it just for points, 
points off like just for my specific skin. So I came across this again. I was like, you know what? Let me just like add this into my routine. Much like the Vichy um, booster. It was like, I know this is going to add a little something to my routine and it'll be fine. Um, and we'll just get this used up and emptied. And so I started putting it into my routine and my feelings are somewhat similar to how I felt when I first tried it. No, it's not immediately soothing my skin or like being that, that wonderful anti-irritation product that I really expected it to be, but it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. Um, I do feel like this is the type of product as you use this consistently over weeks, you may notice a um, slight improvement in your skin strength and your skin health like the Vichy. It's actually really similar to how I feel about the Vichy 89 booster. It's a minimal improvement in the skin. So in that sense, I think it, it, it's a nice product, but I'm just kind of enjoying the extra layer of hydration. You know, I'm just kind of enjoying how this feels. I will say it does smell kind of funny. Um, this has that like raw, unscented skincare kind of smell. It's like kind of that weird, slightly plasticky kind of smell where you're like, eh. And it's, it's pretty noticeable. You know, I do have a whole speech about how um, unscented skincare is not scent free. Does that make sense? If there's no fragrance in it, that doesn't mean that it's not gonna smell like nothing. You know, fragrance is often used to mask these types of smells. Um, and when you do commit yourself to being fragrance free, like I have just for my personal sensitive skin, um, to a certain extent, you just kind of have to like be okay with that. And I am, but I'm going to point it out because I don't usually notice those things, but I did notice it on this one. And I was like, eh, okay. Um, so just kind of an odd smell, but it doesn't linger. It's just, you're going to smell it on application, but it's not going to hang around, but I've just been enjoying it. Like, it's just been fine. I, what I would say is like my opinion on this has kind of mellowed. It's kind of softened. I went in the second time with like no expectations. <laughs> and so on that sense, I was like, this is a, this is a nice, product. But all that being said, I still feel like this doesn't hit like crucial check boxes that I really need for me to really love something hydration. And then that that irritation relief, which I, I totally expect with a, a nice amount of centella in it. This is just a nice booster type of product, but it's still not knocking my socks off. So in that sense, my opinion is still the same. The disappointment, the edge of the disappointment has, has been softened. Um, but I'm like, you're probably not going to see me use this again once this is empty. So I'm curious, is there a skincare product that you've given a second chance to that changed your opinion on it completely? Let me know in the comment box below. I think it's always worth giving something a second shot if you're feeling brave enough, um, because sometimes your mind can be changed. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this from me, please do consider hitting subscribe. I release lots of new skincare content throughout the week. So do consider also turning on notifications so you're never out of the loop when I post the new videos. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to talk to you in the next video. Bye.